Shalom, Yasha Allah. It's Brother Mapathak. That'd be key, but in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. And the topic of this video is going to be dealing with how the spirit of Yahweh Shai will abide in the elect and cause them to be fruitful. Right? The spirit of Yahweh Shai will abide in the elect and cause them to flourish. Right? The elect are going to continue to grow and to flourish in this truth all through the spirit. And um, before we go into the words of the Lord, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, right? Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. That's all praise to the Most High God, whose name is Yahweh, in the name of his only begotten Son, who the world would ignorantly call Jesus Christ. But we know him as Yahweh Shai, right? And that spirit of Yahweh Shai is going to abide in the elect, right? And it's going to cause them to be fruitful, right? It's going to cause them to, to, to grow continually in this thing, right? Because that spirit. Right with that word, right? Because Yahweh Shai is the word. It starts off as a small seed, right? And and the um and the elect is going to flourish, right? It's going to continue to grow into a mighty um and, and fruitful um tree, right? And I want to start off here, um, and bring this out. So this is the book of Luke, chapter eight and verse eleven, and it reads, "Now the parable is this: the seed is the word of God. That's plain." Right, and who is the word of God? Yahweh Shai. Right? So the um the seed, um, when you get this truth, it starts off as a seed, right? That's what brothers go out and do it on, on the highways and byways. Right? When brothers teach the next brother or the next sister, we're spiritually planting seeds, right? We're planting the word into their hearts all through the spirit. Right? So I'm gonna read that again. It says, Now the parable is this: the seed is the word of God, right? And this seed, it has to um grow. Right, some people are gonna get this seed, and um, Satan is gonna take the word away from them. Right, some people is gonna get this seed, and it's gonna um, through uh, the, the um, the trials and tribulations and persecution that the, that occur from this word is gonna cause them to fall out. Right, some people is gonna get this seed, and they're gonna flourish. Right, and that's and that's the elect. Right, the elect are gonna flourish, and they're gonna bear much fruit um from this seed. Let's go to Mark and bring this out. Right? So this is the book of Mark, chapter 4 and verse 14. 14. And it reads, The sower soweth the word. Right? And it says, And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard the word, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. So a lot of brothers, a lot of sisters in this uh, that get this word, right? That get the truth, right? Satan is going to come immediately and take it away from them. Right? They're going to take that seed right away from them. They're going to take the word right out of their hearts. Right? They're going to take Yahweh Shai right away from them, man. Right? In verse 16, it says, And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground. Salakia. Yeah. I'm going to turn this down a little bit. Right? Salakia. Yeah. It says, And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground. Who, when they have re have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. So some people are going to get the word. They're going to receive it with gladness. They're going to be delighted to hear the words of the Lord. Right? I'm an Israelite. Right? Yahweh Shai died for me. Right? I have an opportunity to repent and inherit the kingdom of heaven. And they're going to be glad when they hear these words. Right? But check this out. Verse 17, it says, I have no root in themselves. Right? And so endure but for a time. And afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. So some people are going to get this word. They're going to be glad. They're going to throw their fringes on. Right. They might go out on the highways and byways, read, teach. They might be watching the videos. You understand? It says, but they have no root in themselves. Right. And on a deeper level, the, um, that's saying that they were never even really chosen from the foundation of the earth, man. Right. They just kind of came in, into this thing. Um, um. On their own accord, right? On their own will, right? Really, everything is of the will of the Most High God. But my point is, they were never um, preordained from the foundation of earth to even come into this truth. That's why they had no root in themselves, right? Because let me bring this out real fast. And then we're going to come back here. Let's go to Matthew 15 and verse 13. And it reads, and this is red letter. It reads, Matthew 15 and verse 13. But he answered and said, every plant... Which my heavenly father have not planted shall be rooted up. You see that? So certain um spirits were never preordained by the most high God to even come into this truth. And that's why they're going to be rooted up on a deeper level. Right? So that's why they had no root in themselves. Because they were never preordained to even be in this truth. 
Right? They kind of snuck into the veneer of the Lord. Right? So I want to go back to Mark 4. So that's what it's saying when it, when it says they had no root in themselves. Right? And um, so I'm reading verse 17 again. It says, And have no root in themselves, and so endure before a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. So when the persecution come um, to the saints, right? To those that believe in Yahweh Shai, right? Just like it came in, um, in 70 AD, right? And even before then. Um, a lot of brothers are going to be offended and they're going to, they're going to fall out of this thing. Right. And, and like I went into on a deeper level is because they were never preordained to even endure into the end. Right. They were never preordained to even inherit the kingdom of heaven. Right. So verse 18, it says, and these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word and it become unfruitful. And some people might get the word. They might put the fringes on. They might go out on the highways and byways. And then the things of this world just entice them, right? The flashing lights, right? Their high paying job, right? Now they, now they, um, they always working on the Sabbath, right? They always putting carnal things over the word of the Lord, right? They're putting their woman over the word of the Lord, right? And, and, and different things of this world. So basically you got some men that's going to put the, um, the world before the Lord, right? The lust of the world before the Lord, right? And it caused the word to become unfruitful. Right. And verse 20. Now, these is um, this. This is who we should inspire to be. Right. Um, what the um, Yahweh Shai is going to explain in verse 20. It says, and these are they which are sown on good ground. Right. Such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit. Right. So you want to be that brother and sister that hears this word to receive the word and bring forth fruit. And it says some 30 fold, some 60 and some 100, man. Huh? Right. So you want to be that brother that get the word and you start to bring forth fruit. Right. And that's ultimately going to be the Lord's elect. Those that get the word. Right. And they allow the word to um, dwell within them. Allow Yahweh Shai to dwell within them. And Yahweh Shai, the spirit of Yahweh Shai is going to cause them to flourish. You understand? They're going to be a beautiful tree. Right. With um, an abundance of fruit. Right. And they're going to be um, that tree that's constantly being watered. Right. And the water being the representation on a spiritual level of the wisdom, knowledge and understanding. So they constantly they constantly flourishing and growing through the wisdom, knowledge and understanding. You don't want to be a stagnant tree in this thing. Right. Because that stagnant tree going to be that tree. That's ultimately when persecution arise, when tribulation and anguish arise, that stagnant tree is not going to be able to bear in that time. huh? Right. And ultimately, it's all the most high God. We're going to get that. Right. So let's go to 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 6. And it reads, I have planted Apollos water. Right? So, hey, on this, um, like I said, on a spiritual level, we're all tillers of, of the um, vineyard. Right? You, Some might plant the seeds. Right? You might plant the seed in a brother or sister's heart. Hey, the next brother, they might water it, man. Right? You might teach a brother he got to wear uh, fringes. Right? Um, Stop eating pork. Whatever it may be. He might come across another brother that's teaching the word and he might teach him about the um, grace and mercy of Yahweh Shai, right? Another brother might water that plant a little more, right? And might teach the brother about the prophecies, right? So um, Paul said, I have planted Apollo's water, but the most high God gave the increase, right? So, but ultimately it's the most high God who's going to give the increase to his elect, right? Because the most high God have chosen certain brothers from the foundation of, earth, of the earth to flourish in this thing, right? So... Um, that's how you know um, on a deeper level um, if the Lord is dealing with somebody, right? Because the Lord said in Matthew um, 7, right? Yahweh Shai said, you should know them by their fruits. So you might come across a certain brother and you might be like, hey, the Lord got to be dealing with this brother, right? This brother is always on fire, right? This brother is just, it's just something different about this brother than from other brothers, right? Hey, because hey, the Most High God is most likely giving that brother an increase. Right. And you can see through the spirit, you can see by his fruits that the Lord is dealing with that brother. Right. On a different level. Right. It says, um, I'm going to read on verse seven. I'm going to read verse six again because that's heavy. It says, I have planted Apollo's water, but the most high God gave the increase. But it's ultimately of, of the most high God to give somebody the increase. man. Right. It's ultimately of the most high God. And it says. So then neither is he that planted anything, neither he that watereth, but the most high God that giveth the increase, right? So it's all about the most high, man, right? You can teach the word all day, 
But if the most high God doesn't give the increase, hey, that brother is not going to grow. That sister is not going to grow. Right. You could teach the word to somebody. They might put on their fringes, but they're not studying. Right. They're not reading. They, they hardly pray. They hardly really know anything. They just want to put on their fringes. You understand? It's because the most high God is not increasing that brother or sister. Right. And it's probably because that brother or sister was not really chosen from the foundation of the earth to even come into this truth. You understand? That's that's why they don't really um, take this thing as serious as the next brother, man, or the next sister. Right. So um, let's go to John seven. Right. Just to show how um, we start off at that seed and we're um, we're going to grow by the by the word. Right by the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Right, because the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is that that spiritual water. Right, so let's go to John seven and verse thirty-eight, and it reads, "He that believeth on me, as the Scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water." Right, and that rivers of living water is the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. It's the words of the Lord. Right, so as the tree in this thing, you should always want to be abiding by the waters. Right, because that's ultimately how you're going to grow. Right. And that water being that word and that word being Yahweh Shai. Right. So you should really pray that the Lord allow the spirit of, of Yahweh Shai to dwell within you. Right. Let's go to John 4. In verse 14, it reads, But whoso drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a will of water springing up into everlasting life. And that water, that wisdom, knowledge and understanding. Right. It's going to um. It's going to be unto you. I'm going to read it again. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a will of water springing up into everlasting life. Right? Because it, um, it, the, the foundation is the wisdom. Right? The, the word. Right? The wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is a foundation. That's... um um Because once you start fearing the Lord, Salaki, so once you begin to fear the Lord, hey, that is wisdom. Right? And from then, that's where you grow thereby. It starts from the fear of the Lord. Right? And then the, um you get that wisdom. Right, and that's what's gonna lead you into everlasting life. Right? Let me get one more dealing with the um with wisdom being um let me get this inside right. With wisdom being the water. Right? So this is the book of Syrac, um chapter 15, Salakia. 15 and verse 3, and it reads, With the bread of understanding shall she feed him and give him the water of wisdom to drink. Right. So the wisdom is that water. You understand. Right. And as a tree, you should always be constantly by the water, which is this word. Right. Let me get one more. Syrac one. Right. Syrac chapter one and verse. Bear with me. Verse five. And it reads the word of the most high is the fountain of wisdom. So you should always be by this word. Right. You should always be dwelling and abiding within Yahweh. Right. Because Yahweh is the word. Right. And that's how you're going to grow thereby being that tree. Right. Because a tree needs water to flourish. Right. So it says the word of the most high is the fountain of wisdom and her ways are everlasting commandments. And that's plain. Right. Even Yahweh Shai. <coughs> Salaki, even Yahweh Shai had to get that increase. Right. Let's go to um, Luke 2. Right. So the Lord's elect is going to be increasing. They're not going to be a stagnant tree. Right. Because the Lord is going to give his elect the increase. Go to Luke 2 and verse 52. So even Yahweh Shah, he had an increase on this earth. He didn't just come at the um at the mightiest of statures, right? Right? So um check this out. It says um Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. He, he was he was only 12 at this time, so it took him some time to really come into um his fullness, right? And that's that's of the Lord, right? Check this out. It's Luke 2 and 52. It says, And Yahweh Shai increased in wisdom. And stature. So even Yahweh Shai, when he walked the earth, he had to increase in wisdom. He had to increase in stature. It says, and in favor with the Most High and man. Right? So Yahweh Shai, our Lord and Savior, our King, he had to get that increase as well, man. Right? And you, so, and Yahweh Shai was on fire even when he was 12. Right? When you read this whole account, he turned his back on his parents when they left from Jerusalem from the Passover to stay. And to um and, and and to kick doctrine, man, with the doctrines of the law, right? So you have to be um abiding in His work, always abounding in the work of the Lord. That's First Corinthians chapter fifteen and verse fifty-eight, right? You have to labor to grow. You understand? And like I said, ultimately, it's all from the foundation of the earth, right? The spirit that the Lord gave you, right? Whether you um really were um preordained to be in His truth or not, 
right? But you really have to labor to grow. You understand? It is even on the kernel level, right? Dealing with Esau's workplace. Why the hell would Esau give you a um a promotion, right? If you're not even doing anything with the job that he already gave you, right? You damn always you always coming to work late. You got an excuse every day for why you late, right? Um, even when you on the clock, you always in the bathroom, damn damn texting and courting Eve all damn day, right? And then you damn complaining why you're not getting an increase. Why am I not getting um paid more? <coughs> Salakia. Why am I not getting a promotion? Hey, brother, it's because you're not even um you're not even magnifying the office that you got right now, man. Right? And the most high God, he deals, he deals the same way on a spiritual level. Right on the right hand side. Let's get this in Proverbs 11. Right? So this is the book of Proverbs, chapter 11, and verse 25, and it reads, The liberal soul shall be made fat. Right? And the liberal soul is going into like a giving soul. Right? A gifting soul. Right? It says the liberal soul shall be made fat. So that, that brother with the um the spirit that's that's willing to give, right? To teach the next brother, to give to the next brother, right? He's gonna be made fat. He's gonna be given an increase, right? It says, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. And that brother that's always watering, right? Because like I said, on the spiritual level, we're trees, right? And you have to water a tree for it to grow. Right. So if you're that brother that's always trying to give knowledge to the next brother and sister, you are constantly teaching the words of the Lord. Right. You're constantly doing the videos. You're constantly um, doing the exhortations. You're constantly on the highways and byways teaching the next brother and teaching the next sister. You're constantly giving precepts to your brothers when they're going through um, trials and tribulation. You constantly got an open ear. Hey, whatever it may be, you're a liberal soul. You're a giving soul. Right. You're laboring for the Lord, for your brothers and sisters. Right. For the elect um, chiefly. It says the liberal soul shall be made fat and he that water shall be water also himself. And if you're always watering the next tree, hey, you're going to be water also yourself. And who's going to water you? The most high God. The most high God is going to give you the recompense. You understand? Right? The most high God is going to increase you. Right? But the most high God is not going to increase a man who's not magnifying the office that he already gave him. You understand? It's no point. Right? Why would I increase you and give you more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding? Right? Give you a, a bigger office, uh, so like a bigger office, a greater office, and you're not even magnifying the office that I gave you. You're being a damn slugger. Right? With the little bit that I did give you, you're not a, you're, you're, you're being a slugger, man. Right? Let's go to John 15. So this is the book of St. John, chapter 15, and verse 2, and it reads, I'm going to start from 1, right? It says, I am the true vine. This is Yahweh Shai speaking. This is Red Letter. Um, and it says that my father is the husbandman, right? The most high is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And ultimately that branch that's not bearing fruit, he's going to be taken away. Why? Because he was never preordained from the foundation of the earth to even come into this truth. We read that in Matthew 15 and verse 13, right? It says that every branch that bear fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit, right? And that, 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 that branch that is bringing forth fruit, he's going to be purged. Right. Meaning he's going to be um, increased. Right. That he may bring forth more fruit. That's a beautiful precept. Right. The Lord is the Lord going to see you um, magnifying his name, doing all that you could to um, to magnify his name. Right. And to gather together the elect. Right. And the Lord is going to purge you, meaning on a spiritual level, he's going to increase you. You understand? He's going to make you stronger in the spirit. He's going to make you wiser. He's going to increase your faith. Right. He's going to give you a, um, a, a greater office. Right. He's going to give you a promotion. Right. As the real will call it. You understand? Because he see you doing his work. Right. It says verse three. Um, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me. And remember, this is red letters. This is Yahweh Shai speaking. So Yahweh Shai said, abide in me. Right. And we understand Yahweh Shai is the word. Right. And that also means like uh, we literally have to abide in Yahweh Shai. We should be in the Gospels and really understanding and abiding in the teachings of Yahweh Shai. Right. And it says, and I in you. And if you abide in Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai is going to abide in you. Right? And it says, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Right? And us being that branch, we can't bring forth fruit of ourselves. It says, except it abide in the vine. Except you abide in Yahweh Shai. Right? It says, no more can ye except ye abide in me. And we can't bring forth fruit except we abide in Yahweh Shai. Right. And the elect are going to abide in Yahweh Shai and Yahweh Shai is going to abide in the elect and cause them to flourish and cause them to be great and going to lead them into the kingdom. man. Huh? Right. He's going to cause them to be um, here with him in the kingdom of heaven, ultimately. Right. And um, hey, it's a, it's a beautiful chapter, man. I love John uh, 15. Right. And I kind of want to. Um, 
I'm going to read verse 5 as well. It says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, so he that abideth in Yahweh Shai, and I in him, and Yahweh Shai abides in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. And it goes into what I was saying earlier. Um, You can kind of look at a man and say, and you can say like, through the spirit, right? Because Yahweh Shai said, you know, a tree by its fruits. You, you can be like, hey, man, I can tell, hey, it's something different about that brother. That brother, hey. He got to be a man of the Lord. Hey, the Lord got to be dealing with that brother. You can look at some brothers and you and you say that, right? You be like, hey, the Lord is dealing with that brother on a different level, man, right? So I'm going to read that again. It says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Because that brother that's, that's abiding in Yahweh Shai and Yahweh Shai abides in him, that brother is going to bring forth much fruit. That's what Yahweh Shai said, right? So it says, for without me, you can do nothing. Right, because without Yahweh Shai, you can you can do nothing, man. You understand? So you're gonna know that tree that Yahweh Shai is abiding in by the fruits that he's bringing forth. You understand? So let's go to um, go to Sirach. Right, so you have to labor for the Lord to um purge you in this thing, man. Right, and a lot of brothers they hate laborious work. They don't feel like studying for eight hours. Right, they got a, they got a, they got a day off. They like man, that's too much to study for eight hours. Right, they don't even want to study for an hour, man. They don't want to study for three hours. Hey, brothers, hey, brothers hate laborious work, man. Right, but the Lord said you can't hate laborious work. Right, and the elect, they're not going to hate laborious work, man. The elect, they're going to love getting into the parables, the prophecies. Right, they're going to love getting into this word, man. Right, this word should be an addiction to you. Right, when you were in the world, you were addicted to weed. Right, you were probably a drunkard. You were probably addicted to woman. You understand? But hey, the elect going to be addicted to this word, man. Right, they never get tired of reading the same precepts over and over. They never get tired of reading the same uh, accounts over and over. Hey, it's hey, man. You got to be addicted to this word, man. You got to be addicted to the Most High, right? And His Son Yahusha, right? So it's the Book of Sirach, right? chapter seven, and verse fifteen, right? Hey, if this word is starting to become um a burden unto you, and it's starting to feel like a chore, hey, I want to do something else, but ah, uh, I gotta read. Oh my God, I gotta read. Let me just get these three chapters over with. Hey the, hey, the word's starting to become a chore to you. Hey, man, you're probably going to be rooted out of this thing, man. Right? You're in the wrong spirit. Right? And the Lord, hey, the Lord probably going to root you out of this thing soon, man. Right? Hey, it, hey we got to examine ourselves. Right? So this side, right, chapter 7 and verse 15, it reads, Hate not laborious work, neither husbandry, which the Most High God have ordained. So you can't hate laborious work, man. Especially when it comes to the work of the Lord. You should love this thing, man. You should love going out on the highways and byways and teaching this word, man. Hey, hey, man, I love teaching this word, man. Like, 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 it's nothing better in this world for me except when I'm out on the highways and byways and I'm teaching Jake, a sincere Jake or a sincere um sister, a sincere brother or a sincere sister that genuinely wants to hear the words of the Lord. Hey, so, hey, man, it's a beautiful thing. Hey, sometimes you might, hey, it might make you want to get kind of teary eyed, man. Right? Hey, it's a beautiful thing to see um brothers and sisters hearkening to the words of the Lord. Right? Hey, I love even uh doing the, the lessons over the phone, man. Hey, I love teaching the words of the Lord. Right? You should be you should love this thing, man. You should be addicted to this thing. When you're not reading, when you're not teaching, when you're not praying, when you're not fasting, when you're not abiding in Yahweh Shai, you should be convicted in your spirit. And if you're not, you're going off, man. Right? So the Lord said, Hate not laborers work, neither husbandry, which the most high have ordained, man. The most high God ordained um this labor, man. Right? And I'm going to go to Matthew 7 because I had uh, paraphrased it earlier. Right? It's Matthew 7 and verse. Um, so like, yeah, I'm going to get I'm going to get 19, but I also want to get something else. Um, so like, yeah, bear with me. Con, this is what I want. Uh, Matthew 7 and verse 16. And it reads, ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather? I'm going to start from 15, right? It says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves, right? And it says, um, You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles, right? So the point is, Yahweh Shai said, You're going to know a true prophet by his fruits, right? You're going to know a false prophet by his fruits, man, right? That's plain. So you, that's why a lot of times you might be thinking like, hey, I could look at a brother and be like, hey, it's something different about this brother. This brother be on fire. Hey, I, hey, it seems like the Lord dealing with this brother. It's because the Lord said you're going to know that, man. 
The Lord says you're going to be able to know a man by his fruits. You understand? So um, I wanted to get verse 19. Right. So this verse 19, Matthew 7 and verse 19, it says every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And ultimately, those trees that's in the Lord's vineyard, that's not bringing forth good fruit. They're going to be hewn down. Right. Because it goes back to Matthew 15 and 13. Every tree that my father have not planted shall be plucked up, man. They're going to be rooted up. It's because they were never ordained from the foundation of the earth to endure unto the end. Right. And to receive um, and inherit the kingdom of heaven. You understand? So this, I'm going to read that again. It says, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. So a lot of people that, a lot of the branches that, um, that seem to be in this truth, they're going to be, um, they're going to be plucked up. They're going to be rooted up. You understand? In these last days, right? So we have to be fruitful in this thing, right? We have to bear fruits, right? In righteousness, right? In the sincerity. Let's go to Titus 3 and verse 14. It says, and let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses that they be not unfruitful. So you got to learn to maintain good works in this thing, right? You have to maintain. That's the key point. Maintain good works. Hey, because you could probably be on fire, man. Right. You could probably flourish for a while. Right. Um, You probably was studying a lot. You probably was whatever it may be. Hey, but you have to maintain those good works, man. Right. You can't run out of gas in this thing. You understand? Like I was saying earlier, this thing can't become a chore into you. And if it is, you have to repent and um and, and, and go back to your first works, right? Roughly paraphrasing, right? You can't forget your first love in this thing, which is this word, right? Which is on um, wisdom. And it says, I'm gonna read that again, Titus 3 and 14. Let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses, that they be not unfruitful. And don't wax unfruitful in this thing, man, right? Because the Lord doesn't need an unfruitful tree, right? Ultimately, you're gonna be rooted up and plucked out of the vineyard. Right? Let's go to Colossians 1. Right? In verse 10, and it reads, That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work. Right? So, to walk worthy in the Lord, you have to be, be being fruitful. Right? You can't be a sluggard in this thing. Right? You can't be a slothful servant in this thing. We read about that in Luke 19, where the Lord calls the, the, um, the slothful brother a wicked servant, man. Right? And it says, um, Salakia, and increasing in the knowledge of the most high, right? And the elect, they're gonna to continue to increase in knowledge, they're gonna to continue to increase in works, they're gonna to continue to increase in faith. The most high God gives the increase. Who is he giving the increase to? His elect. You understand? Right? Because they are gonna abide in Yahweh Shai. They're gonna abide and by you abiding in Yahweh Shai, hey the Lord Yahweh Shai said he's gonna um Cause you to abide with the father, man. Right? He said to me and the father are going to make our abode with him. Right? Let me see if I can find that real fast. Give me, um, bear with me. Um, bear with me. I believe it's in, um, John. Calm. I'm going to read this. This is John 14 and 23. It says, um, Yahweh Shai answered and said unto him, if a man love me and will keep my words, right? Allow Yahweh Shai to dwell within him and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. You see that? Right? So for Yahweh Shai to be dwelling with, within you, the most high God is going to deal with you. The most high God is going to love you as he loved Yahweh Shai, right? And you can read about that in John 17. Let me get that real fast. Um, bear with me. Um, bear with me. Um, Khan, this is John chapter 17 and verse 4 24. It says, Father, I will that they also whom thou has given me, right? Which is in this context is speaking about the um 12, right? But in the spirit, it's speaking about the elect, right? And it says, Be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou has given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world, right? Slaki, I'm jumping to verse 26. It says, and this is Yahweh Shai speaking. It's Yahweh Shai actually praying to the Most High for the elect. And it says, and I have declared unto them thy name and will declare it that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. Right? So he said that the love that you have loved me may be in them. Right? And I in them. Right? So you constantly read about Yahweh Shai dwelling in the elect. Right? And A, hey, that's a beautiful thing for the spirit of Yahweh Shai to dwell within you. Right? Causing you to always want to teach Yahweh Shai. 
Causing you to always want to meditate about Yahweh Shai. Causing you to understand the importance of Yahweh Shai. How he is the way, the truth, and the life. And without him, nobody can receive salvation, man. Right? A lot of brothers can't really um, perceive how important Yahweh Shai is. Right? Because Yahweh Shai isn't dwelling within them, man. Right? So that's a beautiful thing to always pray for. That the Most High God allow Yahweh Shai to dwell within you. Right? Um. So I want to go back to Colossians. Where was I at? Colossians 1. In verse um, 10 And it says that Ye may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing Being fruitful in every good work And increasing in the knowledge Of the Most High Right so like I was saying The elect are going to continue to increase in the knowledge Of the Most High Let's go to Hebrews 6 Right Um Um Salakia That's not what I want Let's go to Matthew 20, 21 Let me get a couple more to close out Matter of fact, I think this is what I want. Bear with me. Um, yeah, verse 7, Salakia. So this is the book of Hebrews, chapter 6 and verse 7, and it reads, For the earth was drinketh in the rain that cometh off upon it, and bring forth herbs, meat for them, by whom it is dressed, receive blessing from the Most High God. On the spiritual level, that's a representation of men that's bringing forth fruit, right? They're going to um, receive blessing from the Most High. Right? It says, But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected, and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burnt. Right in the wicked, right? Those that's bringing forth bad fruit, those that's being stagnant, those that's being slothful, right? Those that the Lord didn't really ordain, they're gonna be um, they're gonna be burned with fire, man. Right? They're gonna be burned with fire. They're gonna be destroyed, right? So I'm gonna go to Matthew 21 and verse 19, and it reads, and when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon. But only leaves and said unto it, let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. Right? And that's um this is red letter. This is Yahweh Shai speaking to this tree. Right? Because we understand that trees represent uh men, right? And Yahweh Shai is constantly um the most high God is constantly sending the angels, right, to um check on the vineyard. Right? Yahweh Shai is constantly checking on his vineyard, right? Which is the men that's um so called in this truth, right? And if you're not bringing forth fruit, you're ultimately gonna be cut down, right? So that's why it says. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon. There was no fruits on this on this fig tree, but leaves only. So this this fig tree was drying away, right? It probably used to have fruit, right? But eventually it started to dry away, right? And it says, and said unto it, let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away, right? That's plain. And um, so ultimately, if you're not bringing forth fruits, you're gonna be you're gonna be a castaway. Right, let's go to Luke 13. Um, and verse 6. And it reads, He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and saw fruit thereon and found none. Right? So this is going into the same thing. How the Lord is constantly checking on the um the, the um vineyard and seeing who's bringing forth fruit and who's being stagnant. Right? And it says, Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold. These three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumber it fit to the ground? So this is the most high God. Um, he, he's saying, hey, why? what's the point of this man even being in my vineyard if he's not bringing forth fruit? Hey, cut it down. Right? And a lot of men are going to be cut down in these last days because they're being stagnant. Right? Because they're not taking this truth serious. Because they don't really know what they're in this truth for. You understand? The Lord said, uh, cut it down. Why cumber it fit to the ground? Meaning, why why allow it to take up space in my garden if it's just a um a dry, um, useless tree, man? Right? So in these last days, we gotta be um bearing fruit, right? And, and in, in sincerity and in truth, you understand? Right? We have to really examine ourselves in these last days and um constantly pray that the most high God continues to increase us, right? And um, Lord willing, this is edifying through the spirit. Lord willing, brothers and sisters got the understanding thereof, right? Um, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Continue to study, continue to read, continue to fast, continue to pray, right? Continue to just um do all that you could to magnify the name of Yahweh Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai, right? And um, I want to say with that, Shalom Yasha Allah, right? Meditate on Yahweh Shai because the Passover is tomorrow for all those that keep their Passover tomorrow. So Shalom Yasha Allah.